Caleb McGarry is returning to Atlanta, and Terry Fontenot got away with highway robbery here, as McGarry might want to fire his agent once you guys see how cheap it was for Atlanta to get their uh, – Right tackle back, the fourth best offensive tackle according to PFF last year. We're going to break down this signing and all the other moves Atlanta has made so far in NFL free agency. But it was Ian Rappaport, the first, first one to report the news. Caleb McGarry is signing with the Falcons on a three-year, $34.5 million contract. That's all? I thought it would be a lot more money going to McGarry, who was one of the best tackles in football after a slow-ish, and that's maybe even being a bit nice, three years in Atlanta. The Falcons do not pick up his fifth-year option, and as contract years go, he was one of the best tackles in football. There were a lot of other good tackles in free agency. I thought he'd get a lot more than just $11 million a season. But we're going to break down this move, go through some stats, and get you guys caught up to speed on everything. But this is why you subscribe. Don't miss out. Producer Nick Roloff and I, we're starting to pack up, maybe go home for Tuesday, end of day two of free agency. But we got the notification that McGarry was returning. So we turned right around and we're getting you guys a video as soon as possible. Help us reach our next big milestone. Keep subscribing and we're going to keep growing this channel. Just $11.5 million a season? That's a steal right there. Am I wrong? Is it just me or are we all thinking this? Because the franchise tag for Caleb McGarry was... $18 million-ish, right? And the Falcons do not place the franchise tag on him, and they get him for $7 million less. I mean, his PFF grades from 2022, overall, 86.6. Pass blocking, 66.9, but one of the best run blocking, uh, one of the best run blocking tackles in football, something Arthur Smith wants to do, and he ranked Fourth amongst 81 qualifying tackles last year. His PFF grades overall since he came into the league after being a first-round pick from Washington in 2019. Uh, a slowish rookie season, but that's okay. That's what rookie seasons are for. Improvement, but not a lot in years two and three. And I thought that the Caleb McGarry experiment would be over after year four. But he exploded onto the scene for an 86.6 overall grade. I know there are a lot of teams I thought that would be looking very closely at McGarry. But he returns to the Falcons on a very team-friendly contract. And listen, here's the deal. If Caleb McGarry goes back to playing the way he did in 2020 and 2021... The good news is, it's only three years, $33 million, right? You ride it out with him one more season, and if he regresses majorly, I haven't seen all the guaranteed money, but there's probably not a lot of dead money for years two and three on the contract, so you could definitely get out of it after two seasons if you really wanted to, but if he continues to play the way he is, just $11 million to have one of the better, better right tackles in football? That's an absolute steal right there for Atlanta. So grade the signing for me. Just saw value alone. I'm going to go A minus, right? I just saw Mike McGlinchey, and I like this move for Denver. Get $17.5 million for the Broncos. Is he $6 million better than Caleb McGarry? He's definitely better. I don't know if he's that much better. I watched Juwan Taylor get a boatload of cash from the Chiefs. Is he that much better? I can make the argument he's not better at all. It's an absolute steal for the Falcons, in my opinion. So here's how the depth chart currently looks right now going into 2023. We're seeing four starters for sure returning. Jake Matthews. I'm going to pencil in Drew Dahlman as the center still. Chris Lindstrom and Caleb McGarry. So whoever the quarterback is, whether it's Desmond Ritter, a rookie if we go that direction, or hey, maybe Taylor Heineke at some point, you never know. He's going to have a really good offensive line in front of him with one of the best guards in football with Lindstrom and two great tackles in Matthews and McGarry. So, one more time, three-year, $34.5 million contract. I hope I'm not the only one who thinks this is a great signing for Atlanta. Again, slowish start to his career. 
But if you just want to go off PFF alone, and I'll even mix in the eye test, he was a really good tackle last year for Atlanta. I think this is a home run signing purely based on value alone. Because if he doesn't continue to play the way he did last year, that's actually okay because you didn't overpay for him. You're just paying $11 million a season. You can probably get out after two years if you really wanted to. And if not, you enjoy the ride of having a good starting right tackle for cheap for three more seasons. Let's check out some other moves Atlanta has made so far in NFL free agency. The first one was re-signing Lorenzo Carter, uh, two years, $9 million. Then they reunited Jonu Smith with Arthur Smith, the tight end from his Tennessee Titans days, for just a seventh-round pick. That's nothing. Chris Lindstrom got a mega contract extension. Five years, 105. Really like Atlanta. Just keeping their best pieces in place. Keith Smith, the fullback, he comes back on a cheap one-year contract. And then we get a run of players coming from New Orleans to Atlanta to reunite with their old coach and now current D.C. Ryan Nielsen. David Onyemata, three-year 35. If we're talking about overpays, it's definitely not McGarry. I don't think this is an overpay, but it's definitely a bigger contract than I thought he would be getting. Uh, the punter pinions back on a three-year deal. And then Jesse Bates, this channel, Sweet Prince. We have spoken a lot about signing Jesse Bates. And for all of you that commented, this is clickbait. They're never signing Jesse Bates back in January and February. Shove it. Caden Ellis, he comes over from New Orleans as well. Three-year, $21 million deal. I think it's $7 million for a good linebacker. It's not a bad contract. And Michael Walker and Troy Anderson, that's a good group of guys right there in the linebacker room. Ty, uh, Taylor Heineke, it's two years worth up to $20 million, but I think it's more like two years, $15 million. I said on this morning's video... I don't think you're giving a guy two years worth up to $20 million to hold the clipboard. I think Atlanta is signing him with the intent of there being a bit of a quarterback battle. Desmond Ritter should and will get the QB1 snaps on the first day of training camp. But if Heineke starts to impress in the preseason and Desmond Ritter isn't necessarily clicking with the offense, I wouldn't be shocked if you get a midseason move because Taylor Heineke is this generation's Ryan Fitzpatrick. You may not want him to start week one for you, but if the guy takes over in week five, you're going to the Super Bowl. That's just the way it's going to work with Heineke. And then Caleb McGarry, my favorite signing, just based on value alone, three years, $34.5 million. Now, last night, Atlanta re-signed, or excuse me, signed uh, Caden Ellis. We never really got the chance to really break it down in a video for you all, so let's do that now. Three-year, $21.5 million deal with $11 million guaranteed. Basically, you can look at it as a two-year, $11 million contract. So last year for New Orleans, 78 tackles, 7 sacks, 7 tackles for loss. In his first three years down in the Big Easy, he was a rotational guy. He didn't play every single game. He was earning his wings and special teams and whatnot. But last year, he got a bigger role, and he came through. I mean, his first year as a real starter for the Saints, 78 tackles, 7 sacks, and he goes over to Atlanta, which, by the way, can we discuss all of the – it's kind of like Game of Thrones in terms of the mingling going on between NFC South teams – I mean, everyone from New Orleans is leaving, and they're going to the Falcons or the Panthers. Shy Tuttle went to the, uh, to Carolina, so it's a little bit interesting right there. But um, Caden Ellis, I like this pickup. I think it's not an overpay, and Atlanta needed to add defensive players. I'm still looking for one more pass rusher, which brings me to this question. Who do you want the Falcons to sign next? Gosh, Yannick Ngakwe is just sitting out there right now. That could be a fun signing. I know that the league is getting a bit sour on Ngakwe, but I don't want them to stop right here with just Caden Ellis, Lorenzo Carter, David Onyemata. I want to see a free agent acquisition. And if not, that first round pick better hit, and it better be an immediate player for Atlanta, not someone who you need to you know, let grow into their role and have a raw potential. No, it's got to be a bona fide day one starter who can get 
towards double digits in sacks. That's going to do it for us on today's edition. We're going to sign off and see you guys later. As we get more Falcons free agency news and rumors, we're going to keep you guys informed and entertained all at the same time. So make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that sub button. And hey, if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on notifications. Hit the bell icon so when signings like this happen, you guys are getting a video and you are staying in the know.